Good morning. How is everybody out there? This is Judy from Artistic Artifacts in Alexandria, Virginia with our Facebook Live today. And we are going to talk about batik art panels. So they, batik art panels entered my life in 2012. There was a pre previous husband and wife business that was called Batik Timbal, and they decided they wanted to retire. Can't imagine why. Um, and while they were over in Indonesia living, they uh, obviously, Trish was a quilter and a fabric person and loved, loved those things and um, brought these back to the U.S. And, and as I said, had a business. Many of you may have met Trish and Owen Hodge. So um, when they retired, they wanted to keep the business going in order to help support the artists in Indonesia. So we, my husband and I, got on a plane in January and flew over to Indonesia for a worldwide trip, buying, meeting artists and all that stuff in uh, January, and uh, transitioned to business to artistic artifacts. So it's, it's a great privilege. It's art that I didn't know existed. So I want you to learn a little bit about the differences in batik. We've had batik uh, yardage in the business of quilting for quite some time now, and it's gone through many different um, lives. So it's, uh, I think, become very, very professional. Batik is a heritage craft of Indonesia. The government supports it. It, I think, really keeps the economy going as their exports of this batik fabric. So on a bolt, you pretty much know that, that uh, the authentic batik, most of it comes from Indonesia. There's a little bit in different other countries. There's some in India, there's some in Malaysia, um, some in China, some in Thailand. But for the most part, I think most of our commercial batik on a bolt does come from Indonesia. Now, these panels, these are, think of paintings on fabric. And they are hand drawn with a tool that holds wax and then they are dyed either in a vat or with a brush. So the tool that's used, we have these from Indonesia. These are on the website if you're interested. So they're very basic. Usually it's bamboo with a core and then the wax goes in this area. It's dipped in heated wax and usually it's a batik wax. So it's a mixture of many different ingredients and it comes and it pours out of this. And it is, you need some pretty decent coordination <laughs> to be okay with this. We were privileged to have some Indonesian artists come and teach at Artistic Artifacts two times in, in the last several years. And I took it, the class once with everybody else and did my little samples and all that other stuff. And, Quite honestly, I decided that it was much easier for me to buy it, <laughs> so that I'm going to let them make it. They're the experts. And so um, if you can imagine, each one of these pieces is with this holds wax and creates a dot that creates resist. So look here with this fish. So they did dot, 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 dot. And you have to hold it right. And in heat, wax has to be at the right temperature. So that's how small these, and, then, and these can change. They can have different thicknesses, but for the most part, they're pretty thin. So we have several artists that we buy from at any given time. So we can place orders and it can take anywhere from three months to a, a year to a year and a half, depending on the artist and for us to get um, finished goods. So let me just show you a couple of our current artists. And this is the fish. This is Bam Bam. So he has kind of a free motion sketching. Multiple colors, meaning each color is going to create a wax and a dye step. So here is Mahiar. And if you can see the colors that he has in this one, this is about 11 waxes and dyes. And if you can see, he has um, what we call a cartoon 
that's put the fabric is placed on top of the cartoon on top of a light box which a lot of you are very familiar about and they are traced so he designs what the motif is going to be then it goes into a workshop and it's mostly women who create the details in here so my hair decided the horse was going to be in the city but there is an artist that's doing the work that decided that it's going to have be a flower horse and then we might have a horse that has twirly clues or something else so each of these can be different in the individual detail versus the overall motif another artist that works with cartoons meaning a pre area is uh, Jaka. He is our most popular artist um, and he has rather larger motifs, again, not as detailed as Mahiar. And then again, it goes into a workshop with women who are doing these details. So when we order something from Jaka, just so you know, you know, it's not each individual person who handles this adds their artistic idea to it. So I can say to Jaka that I want two women with a bird on white. I can't tell him that I want this to be forest green or this purple. All I can tell him is two women, two birds on white. And that's all I can tell, ask any of these gentlemen when I order. So you will have to accept that if you delve into this creativity world that even the white can be different. This one might have purple, another one might have turquoise. So there is some variations that are artistically driven by the person who has their hands on it. This is another one. This is Rusli. This is a cartoon also that's been traced. And um, he, this is, you know, you can see the background. So I might have uh, a person on a bike on a blue background or a yellow background or red background. But these are just so fun with their um, creative little motifs. And we have several of them in my book that's here, Colorful Batik Quilts. I have a quilt, a very large quilt that was done with these Rusli panels. And they're really fun. Then there's one more artist. I didn't paste this out right, which is Flowers. So he, Harry Agoon, like Bam Bam, does free stitching. And then he goes back. And so the flowers could be different numbers of flowers. It could be um, smaller and larger flowers. So this is, you know, we have pink flowers or we have red flowers or orange flowers. And that, again, that's how I request the order. Now, based on the complication of the piece, I, I pulled these si this size to show you the difference in price. Okay, the gentlemen who have more involved in the production of their quilts are going to be more expensive. And Mahiar is the top. He has been in this business for quite a long time, and so he is the most expensive. This is $49 for this size. That's pretty much 12 by 12. Um, Rusli is 14. Jaka is 16. Bam Bam is 35 and Harry Goon is 20. So you can see there's a wide range of prices depending on how the, the um, panel has been executed. Do we have any questions? This one, this panel, um, everything that, well, we just got a shipment in, so <laughs> I think we do. Um, check the website for the Batik panels. And again, this is a small one. And we might not have it in white, but we might have it a back, different color background. But this is a Jaka panel. So if you go to Batik panels and look for the artist Jaka, that's where this one is. Now this is a panel that was hand stitched by Chris Vin, who is my partner in crime and behind the camera, as you know. Um, and this is all, she got some details for you to show you how much you can add and enhance the batik. The fish? The fish, yes, I actually have one. 
Um, and if you don't see it on the website, email me because we're we're constantly getting panels in and constantly updating the website. So it's um, constantly in motion. But I do have the small fish panel and I have the fish panel in different sizes. So that's the next thing I really wanted to tell you is that the panels come in different sizes. So, sorry, I didn't keep jumping around, but here you go. Okay, so you see this 12 by 12. Then we have something that's roughly, you know, 36 by 36. And each artist, we have the many different sizes. So these are the extremes. This size here to this size. But there's steps in between, and you will see those on the website. One is called small, one is called medium, this is a large. But they, um, they definitely come in different sizes. This is another Jocka. This is my Lady Liberty. I absolutely love her in my book. Batique panels. There is a piece, uh, a quilt that has instructions that use the large Lady Liberty in the center. But um, again, these are some different sizes. Here is Roosley. Roosley, we just have two sizes. So we have a limited number of small these guys, this size, but we have lots and lots of this size. Um, so, and again, my quilt that is in the book, you just can change it to be larger size blocks. So, um, here's a purple one. Okay. So, purple background, green background. So, so that's what I mean. So do two dancing happy people on a green. So everything else um, is left for the person who's sketching it out. Now one of the things that we, okay, here it is. When I, in the store, we have lots of people who say, you know, I really wanna learn free motion. I wanna learn free motion. So, but they seem a little bit intimidated by it. Well, we're a Bernina dealer. We believe in the Bernina stitch regulator. It's really an amazing piece of equipment. But then the next thing is, you just have to get in there and do it. Make a mess, do a mess. So what I wanna show you, this one is a fun one. So we took Roosley and we free motion patterns and it can be anything you want. And you know what? That means there's no mistakes because it's exactly what you wanted it to be. So we took this Roosley panel and we enhanced it and enlarged the pattern by adding stitches to it. This is a great free motion example. So, and then Chris is looking at um, our quilt. These are common panels. So we have lots of animals, butterflies, fish, and so, just trace the pattern to it. It's perfect for free motion. It, it allows you, and, it, and I'm kind of one of those persons, people, sorry, um, that if I don't like the first line I've stitched, I draw a couple more lines. So then, you know, it all kind of blurs together. And then we look really good. So this quilt is also in our book. And it is kind of an illustration of the different backgrounds that we have. So this is fish on green, fish on blue, fish on white. We can have butterflies on white and green and blue, dragonflies, elephants. There's, we have lots and lots of animals. So let's see, where, where's my fish? Da, 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 da. Oh right here. Here's my fish. So these are how these panels come. So the fish that were used in a large quilt came from what we call as a nine patch. So it has nine fish and you cut them out. 
fish, butterflies, dragonflies, as I said, there's lots of animals and there's lots of backgrounds. So here's gold, blue we saw at the front, green, white, and this is what I'm talking about. See, look at these guys. So this is fish on white. It is all the same part number. But look at the backgrounds. That's, that's the way they create it. So if I order a fish on white, you have many options that you're going to receive. It's not, I can't specifically say I want one on green. Nope. Nope. We can't, not when it's, the, yeah, so. And, and we do say that it's an example of what you see. And we try to get things a little bit closer, but it, it's really hard because they're doing it their way. And, and that's what we're buying. Um, so let's see. You can, um, I want to say, well, I think at 480 is Bernina Stitch Regulated uh, compatible. It does not come with a Bernina Stitch Regulator. So my, my, you know, somebody who's been sewing for a while and know that they really like to do this, we recommend starting at a 570. 570 has dual feed, which is another piece that's, that I absolutely adore, um, is that it prevents creep. So you can sew and you're piecing, when you're piecing your blocks and putting your things together, you're, you're not going to have one edge in front of the other. So that's one thing. And then it does come with a Bernina stitch regulator. So the value of a Bernina stitch regulator is about $1,000. So when you are evaluating machines, we ask you, what do you want the machine to do? That's the first thing you have to ask. What do I want it to do? And then we try to match you up with the right thing. But you can do free motion quilting without... With any machine. Yes. With any, the three series, the four series, you can do any of that without a Bernina stitch regulator. You can drop the feed dogs on all of those machines. I just like the Bernina stitch regulator. Um, so. That's, that's what I'm going to encourage you to use. So hopefully that answered the question. Any more, just email me. I'll be happy to, to tell you. I'm happy to give you my opinion. <laughs> All right. So we showed Chris's. Yes. So this piece here, this is pretty special. We were in Quilt Sampler Magazine, and we had to submit a quilt and they wanted us to use a panel they requested it so I wanted to provide the panel and allow some artistic creative piecing to happen but I also wanted to try and give you something that I felt as a traditional quilter you can recognize which is these squares these half square triangles but if you look in the leaves, again, this is another fun free motion. We have free motion here. I use two sizes of thread. I use size 12, I use size 40. Then I hand stitch beads in there. And this comes with the kit. So we still have kits. They are on sale now. And when we run out, we're not making it anymore. So the kit has the panel. It has our suggestion of fabrics, it has beads and silamide, and it has the instructions. And the price on this is not the sale price. Right, it's not the sale price. The sale price is listed on the website. And they come in? Multiple colors, the flowers. So these flowers are orange which we have the most of because that's what they wanted. And then, but we have pink and we have yellow. There's some other colors that these flowers come in. So um, we're happy to do it. Now, if you don't want a kit, our other recommendation for allowing different types of fabrics and things, if you look over here, Chris's Roosley is using a lot of different fabrics. 
So she took a panel and cut it up. And we're gonna have Chris talk about this. There's an article in Quilting Arts that she wrote about cutting up her panel. And um, if you're interested in different types of fabrics and maybe don't have them in your stash, we have these packs that are two yards. So it's two yards of fabric, 44 inches wide, the full width, and it can be six inches wide, 17 inches wide, 12 inches wide, two inches wide. So these are our end of bolts. This is how we do our end of bolts. But it's a fabulous thing to do to match it up to a panel. <coughs> Here's another one. I love, we love Australian. M&S Textiles, one of our favorite fabrics. And this is a panel, again, Roosley, that's been cut up. And as I said, Chris will tell you about this a little bit more. Uh, in her uh, when she does her Facebook live now this is pretty special and it is in the book it was it was a late omission so this artist um, let's see oh, there we go it's backwards this artist is no longer alive Paxi so uh, he had great detail birds wonderful wonderful panels and i happen to have some that we purchased when we were in indonesia from a um, reseller and my friend rosalie she is a beater and it is amazing what she did so she bought both the panels so we could see a before and after then she cut them and worked them individually and then she assembled them and put them back together again. It is magnificent, absolutely magnificent. Gwen, who did our Facebook Live last week, she took a panel, completely beaded it, absolutely beautiful. We didn't have room to put it in the book. It really deserved to be there, but it's, um, I think it's in her artwork section of her website or maybe it's her blog but absolutely amazing beading that occurs so that one I wanted to make sure that you saw it is in the book so let me show you a little bit about the book um, it has a few patterns in it I am not necessarily a pattern person. I, I tend to work with the materials that are there. I have lots of examples. And then we talk about, well, what did I do with the piano keys? How did, how did they make the panel? Using a motif, cutting them, because they're, they're not square, I can assure you. So there's, there's just some basic techniques of how we suggest you look at a panel. And then we have a few that have some instructions for you to complete the quilt. So wonky log cabin, some hand stitching, Roosley, the stitching, Mahiar. We're out of the cats. I have the cats on order, but we're out of the cats. Um, there's my Lady Liberty, talking about, again, I really love log cabin. So that one is there. This is our Roosley piece. This shows some work with some crocheted doilies. I hand dye a lot of different things. Doilies and vintage items are my favorite. This is one of the ones that I used where I replaced or enhanced, really, is the better word, the flowers with the doilies. This piece, I think this printed a little dark. But this is this piece here with some hand dyes and some embellishments. That is typically how I work with the layering. So this is a quilt on top of a quilt with unusual um, hangers or embellishments. And then I took the hand dyed piece. So this is multiple layers. And, and that's how I usually work. So the book is here and it's available. Uh, then one of the things that we did is we offer, let me take this 
you got them. Okay. So I, I said to one of my people who work in my store, I said, yeah, I got a challenge for you. And so I would never think of this. This is what's so amazing to get pictures about how people interpret these panels is because everybody does them differently. So look at all these plaids, fabulous plaids with this panel. It's, it's great interpretation. Then this is another piece here with, we have a new ruler that's circular or oval, and this is a panel. This is a panel. So the panel was more treated like fabric than a panel, which again, I thought was very creative, and it's always interesting to see how everybody puts their different fabrics together. So those were done by Dudley. Nancy is the next one. She's got her challenge in front of her as well. So she will show her that later. Um, all right, the other thing I want to show you is this is Chris, who did this piece as a quilt, but then made it a fine art by framing it. So it's, it's a different way of presenting the artwork, which I thought was pretty smart. We do have bead mixes that we sell. They're there. I've been making them for a, for a long time. I make them. I choose. They're different every time we make them and assemble them. But those are there. Great enhancement for our panels. It's all based on the panels. Um, this is actually a chop, which you will see. This is how your fabric is made. That's a whole nother presentation working with that. But if you can just see the difference in scale. So this is really hand done. A lot of sarongs are done that way and the fabric for the most part is done with these chops, but that's just a matter of um, difference. Let's see. Yes, these are sarongs, which means they're fabric. They're just fabric. So a sarong is about 40 inches wide two and a half yards long and we have them on our website and we sell them by the piece so you're paying for the piece and some are printed and some are batik so there's a little bit of a difference there some you can wear them on the beach if you want or to the pool but really it's just a great piece of fabric so that's why we buy them and sell them and we are still having them made. If we can get vintage ones, we do that. But um, sometimes they're getting harder and harder to find. But they are still producing them in Indonesia. That's good. One of the other things, so you see what Dudley did. She didn't use a batik. You don't have to use a batik with these panels. And we're going to give you, we just got in Leslie Tucker Jenison's warehouse. And it would just, these colors would be absolutely fantastic with almost any panel, I can assure you. So we're really excited about this collection. It's absolutely gorgeous. And um, we, we look forward to working with it. The other thing I want to let you know is on the website, when we were in Indonesia, we had some uh, fabrics commissioned and we get them on a regular basis. They're 10 yard bolts. We put them up on the website, selling them by the bolt. So you can buy them by the half yard or you can buy them by the bolt and there's 10 yards per bolt. There's a limited number of patterns left. It's great for backings, wonderful for that. You can use them for purses and quilts. That they are very, very masks, masks. Chris is, I'm like, Chris is like, what? I'm like, oh, do I have my, something wrong with my face? <laughs> so yes, we've, we have sold a lot of batik for masks. Um, so that's there. Plus, you know, I absolutely love indigo. So we have some new indigo batiks from Anthony, um, Anthology, sorry. And those are in the store as well. So there's been some updates and things on the website to allow you to uh, buy. And then this piece I wanted to show you, we've talked about our Tierra Handicrafts, which is a fabulous, 
workshop in Indonesia that helps train physically handicapped young adults so that they are creating a lifestyle and a business and an opportunity for them. But what I want to show you, that we have several patterns, they're all on the website, they're great gifts, but this is a hand-drawn uh, sarong that was used for fabric in this purse. So any kind of special event, special you know, holiday gift giving season is coming up. We, the more we sell, the more we can buy from them, the more we can help them. And uh, Indonesia is pretty devastated at the moment as uh, any country that relies on tourism in, in Southeast Asia. So do we have any other questions, Celia? No? Okay, I didn't think I was gonna get through it. I thought I had so much to talk about. And again, we'll show you the background. I think Chris has been taking some pictures as we've been talking, but she will talk to us at another time about how she worked with her cutting her panels up, which is very, um, very interesting. And, and there is an article in Quilting Arts written by Chris that we're very proud to have her part of our team here. So we look forward, please send us pictures. If you've already purchased panels and work with them, please let us know. We love to see pictures. Titik says hello. Ah, uh, Titik, hi. What time is it there? Oh, it's uh, 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> so thank you, Titik, for joining us. We want you to be creative. It's a tough time to be creative, but maybe just making that first stitch and just sewing something together with no plan might get you moving and get you rolling or hand stitching or that type of thing. So we hope that we've provided you some uh, inspiration. That's what our main purpose is to provide you with inspiration. Please show, share on Facebook with us. We have an Artistic Artifacts Creative Minds group. That is a group discussion and question and interaction. And then we post on our Artistic Artifacts main Facebook group. We're on Instagram, YouTube, all of these videos that we're doing with our Facebook Live, we are posting on YouTube as well. So we look forward to hearing from you. Our store is open by appointment. We have an appointment schedule. If it gets tricky, just call us. If you want to test drive a Bernina, please email us and we will set up a special appointment for that. And shopping, we always encourage shopping. Sometimes we just encourage you coming and visiting and hopefully getting inspired. So thank you for joining us this morning. We look forward to hearing from you and seeing you next Saturday. Thank you. Bye.